Hey, Bill. How you doing? Great. Thanks for having me on. Hey, you know, actually, I'm really excited because guess what? I got my Cogno Movement ball in the mail. All right. That's yeah. Great. And, you know, I've been hearing that people have a lot of questions. And uh, this is such a new and exciting tool. I mean, it's an amazing tool for so, so many things. I mean, uh, getting rid of stuckness, you know, is one and manifesting is the other. And so, you know, I really want to have an opportunity to ask you about both. And so I know that we're setting up to have a webinar where people like me can ask questions and learn a little bit more about how this actually functions. So I was hoping that since I just took my ball out of the wrapper and blew it up, I noticed there's this handy dandy little pump that came with it. Uh, if you might walk me through, I've kind of resisted uh, learning a lot about it until we could do this so I could learn along with the audience. Is that okay if we? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Okay, do you think manifesting is a good place to start with this? To no, it's, it is an absolutely wonderful place to start with it because it's really, it's positive, right? You know, everybody, everybody loves manifesting and uh, to have a manifesting tool that actually works um, is very exciting. It's more than, more than uh, just uh, trying to think or feel something into, into reality. You know, it's really true. You know, I, I work as a, an NLP practitioner, master NLP practitioner, as you know. And I work with people all the time who, you know, the main theme I hear is about being stuck. You know, being stuck. And in manifesting, lots of times it's that thing that we have had a problem with for so long that we want to create that maybe we, we just can't. And even sometimes with a, a brand new idea or smaller projects, you know, we, we've heard that we want to be in alignment. We've heard that we need to raise our vibration. And that can be kind of difficult with something that you want. But what I'm hearing from you is, is that this little tool really can get us over that hump. Yes. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So I'm so excited for you to kind of just walk me through and, and everybody, I'm, I'm learning this uh, right along with you. So this is exciting. Um, where would we start? Just let's start there. Where would we start with manifesting? What do I do first? Well, um, the, the thing uh, that you do first is just to imagine this thing, whatever it might be, as real as if it's now. See it, feel it, smell it, taste it. And this is nothing new, right? Uh, everybody talks about this, is just uh, uh, be in it as if it's real now. That's, a, that's the very first thing. But uh, this tool adds a, adds a whole new level to it that's going to assist you, as I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, so I get that piece. So in my lingo, we're increasing what's called the submodality. So I'm gonna imagine it, I'm gonna feel it, right? Yeah. Visualize it as though it's now. I'm gonna yep. bring it into the now, right? right? Exactly. So, yeah. So, I mean, that may even be considered advanced manifesting, just knowing to, to bring those things forward. So now we bring in our little friend. What do I do next? What's, what's this gonna do for me? So, so what you're going to do, this, this ball actually is going to force a higher percentage use of your brain, uh, which has everything to do with everything. So we're going to force a higher percentage of the use of my brain, my brain cells, my actual physical putty up there? Yes, exactly. The, uh, the way this works is that ball is a three-dimensional object. And the three-dimensional objects are recognized by the right-hand portion of your brain. The left-hand portion of your brain uh, recognizes colors and symbols. And uh, I, I guess I didn't know that. I mean, I, I know that the right-hand side is supposed to be more creative, but you're saying it recognizes this, the shape. So that's the reason we have a physical 
object, a shape. That's correct. And That's correct. then you're saying that the color is actually more recognized in the left-hand side of my brain. Colors so that's the same. reason we have uh, colors right here. What about the symbols? What are the symbols? So those symbols uh, happen to also be the symbols of what they call your chakras. Uh, those are the energy, energy points along the center line of the body. They've been known for millennia. And uh, the colors and symbols correspond to those. Okay. So... 3D, right hand, colors and symbols, left hand. Okay, and I'm, I'm activating both sides of my brain because I've, I've got those two things. Now what do I do? What's next? So you, uh, you basically, you're imagining the, the uh, thing that you want to manifest and you, uh, you're completely feeling it and being in it and you uh, throw the ball left and right and identify, you identify the color and symbol. Uh, you can throw it off a wall or you can have somebody throw it to you so it goes over the center line of the body. And when you do this, it forces data from left brain to right brain and back across this, what they call the course, corpus callosum, the center line of, the, uh, of that, the two halves of the brain. Okay, so I'm gonna either have somebody throw this back and forth to me or toss it off a wall but to the left and to the right. Now, is it important that my eyes follow the ball? So, uh, yeah, well, you're gonna catch, catch the ball. Uh, you have to look at the ball and identify the color and say the color okay. because that will activate the left side of the brain. It, it does no good just to throw the ball around uh, because you're only really activating the right side of the brain. Got it. Okay. So as I receive it, I'm going to say uh, red and uh, this, this symbol. I don't know what that symbol is, but I'm going to say red. This is the symbol of the, of the, the uh, first chakra, right? Right. Right. But I don't need to know that. I'm just going to notice it. Notice the symbol and, the, and its color, right? Correct. So red, and then it's going to come back to me, and I'm going to see blue, and I'm activating both sides of my brain. Correct. And you said I'm, I'm crossing my body. Now, I got that that's important, that it needs to come across the body and not just here. I wouldn't want to just receive it here and say green, red, a need for it to go across the body. So talk to us about that. Why do we need to cross the body? So by physically crossing the body, you're causing uh, data to move left, right. So I activated both halves of my brain and I'm having the data move left, right. And keep in mind, all of your focus, right, is on this, uh, this thing that you want to manifest. So we're activating both halves of our brain and we're, and we're focused on this, on this one issue and we're moving rapidly data left and right. So I have to tell you, it's kind of funny. So I'm just moving it back and forth from my own hand to hand and not throwing it back and forth, but I'm already noticing a warmth in my body. Is that, is that normal? Very common, very, very common, uh, especially when you're either manifesting or release. One of the things you'll notice after doing this exercise uh, when you're manifesting is you'll physically feel uh, along the center line of the body a very positive feeling, and then it emanates out through your entire body. So, so what's the function here? What am I actually activating? When I'm moving across my body and noticing here, what am I activating? You're, you have an energy system, right? And okay. you're, you're, <clears throat> this energy system is becoming active and vibrating. And uh, you'll experience it as a very positive feeling. You'll, um, you're also creating kind of an energy and a momentum, a physical momentum uh, as, you're, uh, as you're doing this exercise. I can see what you're saying about the energy system being activated because it's a strange sensation. Just noticing the ball back and forth, I can feel a little bit of, of heat up for me. I can actually feel a little bit of what you're kind of describing as activation in the heart system, heart chakra, even though I haven't really focus that much on something I want to manifest, you know? So very interesting. So, so what else, what else is happening as I do this? Cause I know there's something. So, so um, one of the interesting things I notice 
is for most people when they're trying to manifest, they're up in their head. They're thinking about it. They're thinking about it. Yeah. And what this does is it actually brings it down into the physical body. And, and we're aligned. My, I have a huge activation in my brain and I'm activating my, my energy system in my body and I can feel it in my body. And if you look at your body as kind of a transformer, if you will, uh, the energy steps down through your body. It becomes denser and denser. That's kind of what those chakras and the colors and, and the density is all about. And we manifest in this physical realm in its density, right? Yeah. So would I understand this in terms of like frequency? I'm moving the frequency, aligning it. it I mean, is that part of this? I would say I would say both are true. You're aligning, and you're uh, you're you're activating. You're aligning, and uh, and you're also creating a, a lot of momentum. Ah, very very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I can see that moving it out of the head, moving it down, and getting the whole energetic system activated. I hadn't really thought about that before in those terms. Because in my work, you know, we're, we are talking about submodalities and, and feeling it, but not necessarily getting the entire nervous system uh, involved. And it feels like to me that's what, what we're doing is getting the whole energetic nervous system involved. And through that, you're saying that we actually are creating some momentum. To me, would it be right to describe it almost creates an opening? I, I would, uh, an opening, a uh, magnetism, uh, putting you in line vibrationally. Uh, all those things are all in concert, right, with each other. Yeah, okay. So if I understand correctly now, you know, this whole idea of imagining it, you know, feeling it, making it real. We, we know about that, but this is really new. This bringing it down into the energy system, activating, you know, both parts of the brain and the physiology and, and getting it moving, creating momentum, opening the frequencies, or, or even maybe bringing it down into a lower chakra frequency, you know, out of the, the head. And so, you know, tie it all together for me. What does it all mean to go through this system? What am I going to expect? So, so the, the easiest way I can kind of uh, help with this is to tell a little bit of a story. And, uh, and that is, and this is something everybody here can relate to. When you're, um, I have a little nephew who's two years old, and, and uh, I noticed that very young children are excellent manifestors. If they start obsessing on something, you know, and uh, next thing you know, they've got it. And uh, it could be anything, seeing their friend or, or what you name it. But they just have this way of it just starts to happen for them. So uh, one of the things is they, they think it and they feel it in their body. If you remember when you were a child, how exciting and that you could actually feel that excitement in your physical body. But when we age, we get a little bit deadened to all that. Anyway, this creates that same type of vibration. Back to the story of my two-year-old nephew, he started with a little red truck. He was like, red, red truck, 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 you know, they like, uh, like toy trucks. And, and uh, I was only with him for, you know, a few minutes. And, and he was like, truck, truck. And we were, we were um, along a, a shopping kind of mall thing. The one and only store that we walked into, uh, and you wouldn't expect it in this store, uh, we walked in there, uh, one of the first shelves, red truck. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh. He was like, you know, he turned around and he's a uh, red truck. <laughs> I was like, wow. Well, there you go. He's got a red truck. Anyway, same. Uh, well, I guess what you notice here is, uh, is that for us as adults, uh, you start to notice uh, after doing this type of thing, synchronicities, coincidences, things drawing you in. So, you know, uh, when you're a child, you're just so open and, and there's the connection in between your mind and body and actually how you feel it. Uh, this is, uh, this is the, the terrific recipe and the lesson from our youth that all of us forget as, uh, as we age. So 
this really uh, is a great tool to kind of bring that back. I love that. I love that story. It's so true. Little kids, they just don't know different. They don't know any different that they can't manifest whatever they want, you know? So I love it now that this is really a tool that allows us to reopen that channel as, as grownups. Can you use this with kids? Yeah, a little bit, maybe, um, uh, six years, eight years old, uh, 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 depending upon the kid, it really, it comes down to being able to catch, uh, if they can catch the ball, then, uh, then that's the big thing. That's really cool. So tell me as what can we grownups expect? We've now created this open channel, you know, heated up our chakra systems and aligned our brain that we're using our whole brain. Uh, what happens next? You know, what I, what I say is, uh, is be on the lookout for the coincidences. Uh, they come out of nowhere. Uh, coincidences and synchronicities, you know, uh, all related to that, uh, being open to those and just being aware. Uh, you find that um, those synchronicities and question, uh, coincidences can be uh, as easy as, uh, you know, getting that phone call from somebody you haven't heard from for a long time. Time, you know, they might be calling you because they have the key to what you were just working on. You know, um, be open and, uh, you know, the, the stories abound with, with things like this happening. That sounds awesome. And I really understand that sense of relief that happens. I mean, just the sense of relief to have something that you're uh, – looking to manifest, feel that available, feel that close by, you know? And then on top of that, to have uh, it really aligning our physical energetic frequency. I mean, that that's pretty cool. And enough of a reason for me to use this with my clients as, as a quicker way to get that feeling, because that's really what we're, what we're looking for. So, for all of your uh, viewers, we're going to talk about this some more and really work through some of these things and let people ask the same kind of questions I've been asking now on our upcoming webinar, uh, Thursday night, 6 p.m. Pacific time, which makes it 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, people can tune in and they can talk to you live about the Cogno Movement Ball and about how they can get certified in the Cogno Movement uh, uh, modality if you're a practitioner, but also how you can just use it for yourself and your own family, correct? Absolutely. Uh, look, forward to, look forward to doing that, answering questions, and, and uh, also maybe, who knows, some of the people uh, got their Cogno Movement Ball want to share a story too. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so people are going to be able to share some stories, the people who are already working with the ball and yeah. have had some experience. Oh, man, that's going to be really cool. Okay, so um, we'll talk a little bit more uh, the next time, maybe about uh, that horrible feeling of being stuck and, and maybe how it works to, to clear that as well. Deal? Deal. All Sounds right. Sounds great. Thanks, Bill. And we'll see everybody 6 p.m., Thursday, the 14th, 2018, uh, here on, on Zoom. Um, we'll send you a link to register for the seminar. Of course, it's free. Bill's going to be here for us to just show us this amazing new tool and let us uh, get an idea of what it's all about. So we'll see you guys all there. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.